what we're going to see is this progression, the way that God reveals himself. And what I think we see here is a picture of God revealing himself to the lost. The way that, that someone would need to, like the kind of the steps that people need to go through to be saved, to get to know God. And we start off with someone just approaching and seeing a fire that, that what's inside that fire isn't consumed. It doesn't just become nothing. It doesn't get destroyed completely. It just, it's just sitting there in the midst. So Moses just goes over there, look at his fire, and I, I think this is a pretty easy reference to see that this could be a reference to hell, right? This could be a symbol, I should say, of hell. Because hell, if you look at Mark chapter 9, verse number 43, is described as this everlasting fire. Because here's the thing, if the fuel that's burnt, that's being used to, to create that fire never goes away, that fire is going to continue forever, right? I mean, it's just going to keep burning and burning and burning and burning. So it's this everlasting fire. And since the bush isn't being consumed, I mean, this fire is just going to keep on going and going and going. And not just that, the things then that are in that fire don't get consumed, which is exactly how hell is. And we can see that for sure. We know that for sure based on Mark chapter 9. Look at verse 43. Bible says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. It's never put out. That fire continues forever. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So the fact that he's saying also, hey, there's going to be worms. You know, like you're eaten of worms when you die, like your body is. He's saying there, their worm dieth not. So if there's worms in a flame and it's not dying, like it's just, it's just there and continues forever and ever and ever, that shows us that there's a state of being, being consumed of flames with, li with living things. I call it living, right? I mean, the Bible refers to, every th you know, to, to those souls in hell as being dead. But they're still conscious. They're still aware. They're still feeling. They're still existing in that state of death. And when it comes to the soul, the soul is not consumed in hell either. The soul is going to continue. And one day, like right now, if a person dies and goes to hell, it's just going to be their soul in hell. But after that second resurrection, they will get, they'll be reunited with their bodies. They're going to be reunited and they're going to be uh, soul and body burning in hell. And even still, then they will not be consumed and just, you know, like, like a, a piece of wood would be consumed in a fire that we have at camp and just become dust. That would be known as, as annihilation. And that there's a lot of cults that believe in that stuff, like Seventh-day Adventists and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that, oh yeah, you just become nothing. Like you might be annihilated and just, and just turn into nothing. It's just nothingness. You just like cease to exist. But that's not, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says here, the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if everyone's just annihilated in hell, well, then why would the fire never be quenched and just continue on? Like, what would be the purpose of that? Verse 45 says, And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter, into, enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to, be, to enter in the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Three times Jesus is pounding this home saying, hey, the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not. It lasts forever. And even if all, you know, any of these horrible things that you wouldn't want to have happen, you wouldn't want to have your hand cut off, you wouldn't want to have your eye plucked out, he's saying, it's better. That's way better for you to experience that and to go through that than it would be for you to spend an eternity in hell. And I, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not just lining up to go get my eye plucked out. That doesn't sound like very much fun, right? But if it comes to a choice between, well, you could either get your eye plucked out and go to heaven or keep your eyes and go to hell, I'll pluck out my own eye. You know? <laughs> I'll, just, I'll do it myself. 